Are Millwall a bit of a dark horse this season and are they going under the radar right now? Let's discuss in today's video. Because after beating Swansea over the weekend, they're now into the top 10 of the championship. They've only conceded one goal in the last 360 minutes of championship football. And I have to admit, their underlying numbers have been really strong so far this season. Millwall fans, I'd like to get your thoughts on this in the comments down below. We're going to be taking a look at you in a little bit more detail in today's video. Any other championship clubs who you think we should take a deeper dive on on the channel as well do let me know down below 250 likes on today's video would be massively appreciated but without any further ado let's just jump in so after Millwall's triumph over Swansea over the weekend they now find themselves 10th in the championship table only three points away from the top six all right it's still very early days in this championship campaign we've only played 12 matches but the table's starting to take shape and after winning back-to-back -back matches Millwall have absolutely shot up the table now in terms of the game itself against Swansea I think we all saw this one as a low scoring affair Swansea are the lowest scorers in the championship so far this season and Millwall haven't exactly been blessed by a great goal scoring ability on the road so far this season and after Swansea had the better of this game for the vast majority of it you know had 72% possession three big chances an xg of 1.93 it was Millwall who popped up with the last minute winner and it was such a template Millwall away performance something we probably associate from the Gary Rowett sort of era you know they won this one with a clean sheet with the only big chance they had in the entire match but I think the reason Millwall are an interesting case study right now is because of the general direction that Neil Harris seems to have them going in from the point of Harris taking over at Millwall last season until the end of the campaign only Ipswich picked up more points in the championship than Millwall did which considering the state of affairs that Millwall were in when Harris walked into the club I mean this was a miraculous run of form they picked up 26 points in their final 13 league matches of the season which is an insane run once again during this run here they weren't blessed with a bunch of goals they only scored 14 goals so barely over a goal per game during that run but they were just so defensively tight only conceded nine goals in that run and that's sort of what we're seeing from them of late defensively they have been one of the better sides in the championship so far this season they've only conceded 12 goals and while they aren't one of the top scoring sides in the division their underlying numbers for chance creation have actually been really good so far. Now XG and underlying metrics certainly aren't the be all and end all and these things can level out the more a team plays and things like that but I find it really interesting so far this season only Norwich, Leeds and Middlesbrough have created a higher XG than Millwall have which proves they're getting in some really good areas in the majority of the matches they play. All right that game against Swansea obviously there wasn't a lot of goal mouth action for Millwall but generally speaking they have got themselves into some really good areas so far this season. And then on the flip side of that, defensively going off their XG numbers, they've also been a top six side so far this season with only West Brom, Middlesbrough, Burnley, Sheffield United and Leeds limiting the opposition to fewer chances than Millwall have so far this season. And that's a really good characteristic to have. I think Lucas Jensen in between the sticks for Millwall in particular is someone who's really started to come into his own in these final few weeks, obviously. Millwall have done really well. They've kept three clean sheets now in their last four championship matches after what seemed like a bit of a jittery start for him in between the sticks at Millwall I think he's really come on and he's in a good run of form right now he was absolutely fantastic over the weekend against Swansea Millwall's best player in that match I think ultimately the area where Millwall could be caught out is perhaps a lack of attacking quality at times but they do have two of the most clinical players in the league right now in Duncan Watmore and Romain Essay who have both been two of the biggest XG overachievers so far this season in terms of the chances they've taken. Romain Essay in particular is someone who I do want to talk about because I think he's probably Millwall's most exciting prospect right now. This table right here I think tells you everything about Essay right now. Only Romain Mundell at Sunderland has completed more successful take-ons in the championship this season than Essay has. 26 so far this season in just over 11 appearances because he's still young developing and in some ways quite raw I think you are going to get those instances with a player like SA where he is going to frustrate you he's not always going to make the right decision because that comes with maturity and age but in terms of raw talent and being someone with a bit of a different skill set that Millwall haven't always had in years gone by I think he's someone to get really excited about right now and the underlying stats back that up now in terms of what's possible for Millwall 
this season. I found it interesting looking at their historical finishes in the championship in recent years gone by. I think it's quite easy to forget that, I mean, generally speaking, under Gary Rowett, this was always a side who were on the cusp of the top six. So a few seasons, they very nearly snuck in there. Last season, they finished 13th. It was a bit of a write-off, really. The club just went in the totally wrong direction after Gary Rowett had left the club, tried to go for something new under Joe Edwards. That didn't work out, and they flirted with relegation for a bit until Harris, obviously, was able to save them. But in the years prior to that, 8th in the Championship, 9th in the Championship, 11th in the Championship, 8th in the Championship, Millwall were a really consistent top-half side, and there's no reason why they can't potentially get back to that this season. I have to be honest, going back to the summer transfer window, I wasn't blown away by their recruitment or anything like that. They brought in quite a few untested players for championship level. Don't get me wrong, there were a few good signings sprinkled into this, but obviously the loss of Fleming was one that was well documented, probably their most technically gifted player, albeit last season he was pretty hit and miss for Millwall, I thought. But suddenly of late, things seem to be coming together under Neil Harris there. Speaking about Neil Harris as a championship boss as well, he is one of the most experienced at this level. He's closing in on 200 championship games managed for both Millwall and Cardiff. If ranking his points per game record against the fellow coaches in the championship right now, Harris would rank 13th. Throughout his entire tenure as a championship coach, he's averaged 1.34 points per game. But ultimately, for Millwall's sake, I think this run of fixtures right here will determine how serious of a top half side they potentially are for this season. The next three home matches in particular, which are against Burnley, Leeds United and Sunderland. The three clubs who have been arguably the best sides in the championship so far this season. How will Millwall fare at the Den against all three of those? Because, I mean, at the moment, they're not giving away that much to the opposition, are they? And at the Den, you never really want to back against Millwall. I think one of the biggest takeaways I always have with Millwall sides of years gone by is while they've never always been the easiest on the eye in terms of playing fluid football and things like that, boy, can they be effective at this level. And I think that Harris knows how to harness that. I think in their home matches in particular, as we saw before, they're starting to create a lot more chances now. All right, on the road, they still like to keep things tight, as we saw in that Swansea game. But in a league like the Championship, where other than the top maybe four or five sides, there's not an abundance of quality in this league. If you're a solid outfit like Millwall, you carry on plugging in there, and then you get to the later months of the season, and you're still in the race... Who knows what could happen? Well, Millwall fans, what are you thinking right now? And what are your realistic ambitions for the remainder of the campaign? Do you see enough talent within this squad right now to push on from last season's finish, look to secure a top half finish with maybe being an outside shout for one of these top six spots? Or do you think that will come just a little bit too soon for you right now? Do you think that extra quality is perhaps needed within that squad. You're averaging 1.3 points per game, which if projected over an entire season would be worth 61 points. That wouldn't be enough to get you into the top six. But if you can increase that margin ever so slightly, you never know, you could be in the conversation. Millwall fans, I want to hear from you in the comments down below. And general fans of the championship as well, what have you made of Millwall if your team's played them so far? Obviously, I can speak as a North End fan. It was pretty comfortable stuff for Millwall in the end as they beat Preston at the den earlier in the season but that usually tends to happen get all your thoughts in the comments down below but apart from that that will now wrap it up for today's video guys thank you very much for tuning in if you're going to enjoy make sure to drop a like subscribe if you are new around here as well and i'll see you all in the next one